Hey guys, Acerd here, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a homing projectile like the one you see here. I'll only be covering the code directly related to the homing projectile, so if you want a more in-depth tutorial on ranged projectiles in general, where I go over everything, check out this video, the link is in the description. This video is sponsored by Node Essentials, the biggest knowledge base for Godot nodes, but more on that later. By far the easiest way to make a homing projectile is to make it face the target, then make it move forward just a little bit, and then repeat those two steps over and over and over. And that is exactly what this code does. We're in the projectile script, and this code is in the physics process, so it repeats over and over. First, we check if we have a target at all, and if we don't, just move it forward. So we're adding the forward vector times delta times max speed to position, uh, and then return. If we do have a target, we look at it, and then we move forward. So look at literally just makes, it rotates the missile, it rotates the projectile at the target. And then uh, this code right here, move toward, so we're setting position equal to position dot move toward target the target's global position. Uh, and the amount we're moving toward is max speed times delta. So just basically these two lines and uh, we get this. The homing part of this works perfectly. Now, what doesn't is when the missile first is shot, it immediately snaps towards the target. And in the vast majority of use cases, this isn't what you want. This, this doesn't feel good, it doesn't look good. Um, if it is what you want for, for some reason, then you're good to go. Uh, just, just use those, those two lines. But if you want a projectile that gradually turns towards the target instead of instantly snapping to it, uh, keep watching because I'll show you how to do it. So we're back in our projectile script called missile. I'm just going to call it missile from now on because that's what I made. Uh, let me really quickly go over the target variable. So this is where we store the missile's target. Um, I just use an area 2D uh, for, to detect the enemy, but um, importantly, this is the function that sets the target variable. And we don't just set the enemy that we detect. We make sure that we don't already have a target. So. An enemy enters our area. Uh, this is what it looks like, by the way. Big old area right there. Um, an enemy enters it. If we already have a target, so if target does not equal null, just return. We don't want to do anything. We don't want to overwrite our current target. Um, also, if, if the enemy that gets passed in somehow equals null, uh, we also return because... You don't want to set target to null. Um, and if both of these things don't happen, just set target to the enemy that gets passed in. Now that we have a target, we can make the missile home in on it. The idea is to have a current velocity, which is the blue line. That's the velocity the missile's currently moving in. A desired velocity, which is the red line. That's the velocity that's moving directly towards the enemy and then the change to the current velocity to make it gradually converge in on the desired velocity. That's the green line. It's a little bit hard to see, but if I, if I, shoot, if I shoot it down here, you can kind of see it. Um, this, again, is, is the amount that's, that the current velocity is changing every single frame. So by calculating this change, then altering the current velocity by it, um, and then using our updated current velocity to, to set the missile's position and rotation, we can do this. We can make the missile home in on the target. Really quick, I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of vectors. If you don't, or you just want a quick refresher, I highly recommend checking out this video, Introduction to Vectors for Game Creators. The link is in the description. We're back at the missile script. Let's start with current velocity. Uh, which is the thing we need to keep track of, right? So we store it in this variable called current velocity and we initialize it to a zero vector. And in ready, we're going to, we're going to set current velocity equal to max speed, which is just a number. I set it to 500 um, times the missile's forward vector. 
the rest of the code is in the physics process, so it runs over and over. Um, it's pretty much all commented out, so we can go line by line. We start by finding the direction vector of the desired velocity. We'll initialize it to the forward vector of the missile, but if there's a target, we want to overwrite that with uh, a direction vector that's pointing to the target, that's pointing to the target, right? Um, which is this, global position dot direction to targets global position. Now let's use this direction vector to calculate the desired velocity, which is just the direction vector times the max speed. And if we uncomment these two lines and play, we can actually visualize that. So the missile's not moving because we commented out all the code, but that red line is what we just calculated, the desired velocity. Technically, the desired velocity times 150, so you can actually see it. Now that we have our desired velocity, we can use that uh, in combination with our current velocity to calculate the change we want to add to the current velocity to slowly uh, steer it to our desired velocity. Um, and that is calculated right here. We take the desired velocity and subtract current velocity from it. This creates a vector that is the exact amount we want to add to the current velocity um, to, again, make it converge onto the desired velocity. We then take that vector and multiply it by the drag factor. It's kind of like the turning speed, um, so it doesn't happen too fast. I've uncommented some more lines, and now we can visualize the current velocity and the change that we're going to add to it. So this green line is the change that we just calculated. This blue line is the current velocity. So on the next frame, the blue line, okay, the blue line would be like this. It would, it would end here. And this would keep happening over and over. So we have the change, let's actually use it. We'll add the change to our current velocity. Um, this previous velocity is just required for the line displaying, by the way. Now our current velocity is updated. Let's set our position and rotation based on it. So position, we're, go we're gonna take our position and add our current velocity and then mul uh, multiplied by delta. So um, it's based on the time between frames. Um, and then for our rotation, we're just going to look at the global position plus our current velocity. Um, and this is it. This this is all we need. There, there we go. We have we have a homing missile that actually gradually steers towards our target. Changing the travel speed will make the missile travel faster, right, or slower. And then the drag factor will um, make the change larger the change per frame larger, so it'll make it turn faster, right? Um, or slower. A final bit of polish we can add is to actually give the missile like a boost when, it, when we first launch it. It'll make it feel quite a bit better. And we can easily do that by um, just multiplying our current velocity um, when, we, when we initialize it. Multiplying the value that we initialize it to by just another number. I'm gonna do by five. So now the current velocity is going to start at a velocity faster than its max, right? So it'll, it'll start fast and then gradually slow down. And that's, and it looks like this. So you don't really notice it unless you take it away. This, this is a lot better. And with that, uh, we're, we're done. I really hope this helped guys. If you want to download this demo, the link is in the description to actually run it. Um, you don't just press play, all right? You don't just press play because there's multiple demos in this uh, project. So you're, you're gonna wanna find the homing demo folder and, um, and then find the homing demo scene, right click it, and up here it's gonna say set as main scene. Um, I can't do that because I already did it. So that'll allow you to just press the play button and run it.
That's it for this one, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. This video is sponsored by Godot Node Essentials. It's the largest knowledge base for Godot nodes with over a hundred demos and dozens of guides. There's 2D, UI, 3D. It'll teach you time-saving tricks that'll help you in every project.